Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different because instead of a vlog we're going to be talking about how money works in Zim so that when you visit or move or whatever you have a little bit more information than I did when I landed so let's get into it. You can use the chapters below and in the timeline to skip to the part that you think is most interesting or most relevant to your situation. I am filming this video at the beginning of January 2023. It is very possible that by the time this video goes out, government directives and the directives of private companies have changed slightly when it comes to money and currency and all of that. I would highly recommend checking out official websites and potentially even Twitter to see what all is going on at the time of you watching this video. Brief history. When Zimbabwe regained independence in 1980, it switched from using the Rhodesian dollar to the Zimbabwean. For a while, the Zim dollar held strong. In the 1980s, one Zim dollar was equivalent to two British pounds. So the exchange rate was pretty fair. After the economic crash of the early 2000s, the Zim dollar inflated so far that a loaf of bread could be up to 10 billion Zim dollars. That means we went from an exchange rate of one to two, so one British pound is equivalent to two Zim dollars, to about one 10 billion. One British pound worth 10 billion Zimbabwean dollars. Fast forward 20 years and we've arrived in 2023. The Zim dollar hyperinflated out of existence, but now it has made a comeback. And technically at this point we're on Zim dollar 3.0, 4.0, something like that. So right now the official currency of Zimbabwe is the Zim dollar and also the US dollar. The Zim dollar is also referred to as RTGS or bond and that is more likely what you'll hear me and other people referring to it as. That being said, a lot of retailers will actually let you pay with more than just these two currencies. In addition to RTGS and US dollar, you can also generally pay with South African Rand, the Euro, or even the British Pound. So now you know what currencies you can pay with, but what modes of payment are available? Modes of payment differ from town to town, from shop to shop, so make sure you ask somebody who works at the shop if you're unsure if your method of payment will be accepted. You may be given the following options. A debit card issued in Zimbabwe, also known as local swipe or Zim switch, cash in any of the listed currencies from before, EcoCash, which is mobile money, a debit card issued outside of Zimbabwe, also known as International Swipe or Nostro, or a credit card issued outside of Zimbabwe. In my experience, large supermarket chains like Pick and Pay, OK, OK Mart, Spar, Bon Marche, all of those will accept all of these variations of modes of payment, but sometimes their international card machines are slow or the network is down, so you want to be mindful of that. Don't panic if your card gets declined the first time. It's possible that there was a network issue. If the card machine doesn't explicitly say that your card was declined, but the payment still didn't seem to go through, I would check your bank statement if you have a mobile app or check your email to see if the transaction went through because sometimes the transaction goes through on your side first before it reaches the supermarket and you don't wanna end up paying for things twice. I have done that on occasion or two, potentially three. If you're in an area with a high number of tourists or foreigners, then you're even more likely to have a wider range of payment options at smaller stores or stores where there are less tourists and less foreigners, then you're more likely to need to pay with ZimSwitch, Cash, or EcoCash. When paying with card or EcoCash, note that you will be charged an additional fee from your service provider on top of whatever the total is for the supermarket. Another note when it comes to using international swipe is that certain supermarkets have forex only lines. So if you're going to pay with a foreign currency or a foreign card, you will need to use that forex only line. Other places will not have a separate line, but they all will have separate card machines. So if you say that you want to pay with international swipe and they use the ZimSwitch card machine, your card will be declined. If you want to pay with ZimSwitch and they accidentally put you on the international card machine, your card will be declined. So make sure that when you get to the cashier, you specify what type of card you're using, international or local. All of that being said, because of the way that the exchange rate works, you can save up to 50%, sometimes even more, by paying in RTGS and not in a foreign currency. 
So you want to make your money go further because in general, Zimbabwe is an expensive country, but how do you even get a hold of RTGS? That is a great question. It's also a very complicated question. Um, I will do my best to explain this. Officially and legally, the only way to get a hold of RTGS is to go to a local bank and to exchange your money there. As of the beginning of January 2023, the official exchange rate or bank rate for USD to RTGS in Harare is 1 to 700. That means for every 1 US dollar, you will receive 700 RTGS. When you enter a supermarket, prices are likely going to be listed in RTGS, but there will be an exchange rate board by customer service to let you know what the exchange rate is for that day. Often it's the same as whatever the prevailing bank rate is. So this board will list US dollars, euros, rand, all of that, so that you know what your money is going to be worth when you are shopping around the supermarket. Unofficially and illegally, you can exchange your foreign currency for RTGS on the side of the road or near any sort of supermarket. If you're going into a supermarket in particular, somebody may approach you and ask you if you want swipe or eco cash. In this scenario, the next step would be to ask them what their rate is because different people will have different rates since it's not governed by whatever the prevailing bank rate is. Right now in Harare, the black market exchange rate for US dollars to RTGS is 1 to 1100. So for every one US dollar, you'll receive 1,100 RTGS. Keep in mind that different neighborhoods and different parts of town have different black market rates. EcoCash cannot swipe. And the rate for EcoCash is often different from the rate for swipe. Let's back up a little bit now and talk about how you can access your money from abroad while you're in Zimbabwe. The first and most expensive way is going to be to send wire transfers from your foreign account to your local account in Zimbabwe. I have never done this, but hypothetically, it should work fine. Your next option is to use your debit card as is in stores and just swipe using the international swipe machine. Keep in mind that smaller stores probably won't have an international machine and also if you're using public transport or any sort of taxi service, then they're going to want you to pay with cash. So to get cash, you can go to an ATM. ATMs that dispense USD are getting harder and harder to find as different international banks are pulling their economic interests out of Zimbabwe. There are also certain ATMs that only dispense RTGS or only dispense certain denominations of US dollars. With time, you'll figure out which ATMs you prefer and which ones give out the denominations that you're looking for. The third option you have is to use a money transfer service like World Remit, Western Union, or MoneyGram. Each of these services has differing and limited availability worldwide, so you'll need to see which ones are available in the place that you're trying to send money from. When you need money, you can have somebody from the country where your bank is send you money using one of these services. They'll need a valid ID on their end to send you money, and you'll need a valid Zimbabwean ID or valid passport from any country to now receive the money. They'll also be given a unique code to give to you once they've sent the money. For Western Union, this is called the MTCN. There are multiple banks and multiple different locations in neighborhoods that offer Western Union, MoneyGram, and World Remit services, so that shouldn't be too hard to find. One thing you should note is that if you're going to use a bank in town, then you'll want to go early in the morning because the lines get quite long for these services. And also to use these services at certain banks, such as Ecobank, you'll need to be an Ecobank customer. You can use this same method when you want to send money to loved ones abroad from Zimbabwe or from abroad to Zimbabwe. But if you're living in Zim and you want to send money to other loved ones who are also living in Zim, then you're better off using a service like Mukuru because you're not exchanging currencies. The fees, in theory, should be cheaper than trying to Western Union within the same country. That was a 
lot of information, but hopefully that cleared up any questions or hesitations that you had when it comes to money and dealing with it within Zimbabwe. I know I would have appreciated a video like this a year ago, but thankfully I had a lot of really, really patient people in my life who were willing to walk me through each one of these steps.